I'm back. We're going to go ahead and get started on putting this rocket together. And what you guys need to provide is some paper towels, some masking tape, and three quarters. And we'll use the quarters here at the end. So, the first thing that we're going to do is make sure that we have a work area that's big enough to do what we're going to do, that things aren't going to get toppled over, that everything I have in this zone here I kind of don't care that it gets glue on it. I'm going to try my best not to, but just in case, just make sure that you have a, an area big enough and things don't get knocked over. Hopefully, you, what you do is you watch this video to the end. You have an idea of what you're going to be doing, that you have the things that you need, and that watch the video again as you put it together. If you have any questions whatsoever, don't glue something together because it's really hard to unglue once it's glued together. We're going to be using a couple of different types of glue. One is a super glue and one's a two-part epoxy called JB Weld. And um, both of them, you don't want to get it on your skin. The super glue is going to glue things fairly fast. The epoxy has things in it that you don't want on your skin or on your clothes. And so we're going to go ahead and go from there. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get one of the little bags. And this happens to be bag number one. And it has the glue, some steer sticks, a little piece of cardboard that we can mix the epoxy on, a piece of sandpaper in case we need to sand some of the flashing off of either the wood or the plastic. And so we're going to get our other paper towel. And the first thing we're going to do is um, open up the super glue. It, it's sealed, and what we do is take the red and white lid off. There's a little red ring on here. We can dump that off. And then when we put the lid back on, we want to cover this up in case it's pressurized. And I don't want it to spray my face. And then we're going to tighten the lid on. We're going to take the little red lid off. We're going to test this a little bit. Make sure it's open. There we go. And then we're going to put the red lid back on. So that's all ready to go. And that's the super glue, the little tube. Um, where I put the super glue, I'm going to take that off and I'm going to drop it in the garbage can because I don't want to lean on that and be talking to you guys with a paper towel stuck to me the whole video. The other glue is called JB Weld. It's a two part epoxy, it's fairly thick. It, it's a really good glue for a certain application that we're going to be doing at the very end of this um, rocket. But we'll be using it throughout. Just going to separate the plastic from the cardboard. Maybe, maybe not. Into the garbage. another package garbage we're going to talk about the epoxy here for a minute it's a two-part epoxy and it takes equal parts and what we're going to do is instead of having to weigh it or measure it any way very complicated we're going to be mixing on little cardboard pieces and these two black lines are a guess at how much of this JB Weld we're going to need for this episode of this build. It's about an inch and a half um, from the two lines. When we get to that point, we're going to put one of the black and then one of the white right next to each other. That way we have equal parts. When we open up this epoxy, what we're going to do is we're going to take the lid off, we're going to turn it around, and if we look at it, there's a point in the very top of the lid. Again, if this is pressurized, I don't want it coming into my eyes, I'm going to push it through the stopper on there, twist it a little bit, and then put the cap back on. 
Same thing with the black. And they are different colors. And we'll end up with kind of a gray color at the end. Uh, take the cap off, put paper towel or something over it, push the cap on, twist it a little bit, make sure it's open, put the lid back on. Okay. Also in here is the sandpaper. Uh, we're going to be removing some of the edges. Maybe I already said that. Um, we have some little narrow steer sticks, a lot like you find at Starbucks. And then we have some uh, ice cream um, popsicle sticks too. Um, so that's what comes in bag number one. And we're going to start with just the super glue and the sandpaper. Inside the box, what you're going to need is the nose cone and the short white body tube. And all the cardboard parts came from a company called Lock Precision who sells model rocket kits and parts and also high power rocket kits and parts. Um, they gave me or you guys a deal on what I ordered for these kits. And um, in the future, if you need anything from them, look them up on the internet. It's called Lock Precision. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at the nose cone and if I was telling you in the first video, I actually cut off the base of this one. And so the first thing we're going to do is take the sandpaper and we're going to smooth this out because I don't want to try to put my payload in there and having it hang up on anything that's in its way. So I'm just going to take the sandpaper, run it around there a few times, making a nice smooth transition. that's pretty good. We're going to dump out anything that came into it. And we're going to be gluing plastic and cardboard together with the super glue. When they make some plastic parts, sometimes they spray a release film into the mold when they do things. And so to help the super glue glue, epoxy, glue it together, um, we're going to wash this and stuff. And um, I have some Windex here. You can just use some hot soapy water, spray it on here. Use one of the paper towels. And all I'm doing is washing this shoulder area here. Making sure it's really dry because we're going to glue it together. So we have that. So if we look at this body tube here, you're going to see three little crosses or X's depending on how you look at them. And if you look inside, you're going to see a black squiggly line. And where we're going to put the glue, the super glue, is where the black squiggly line is. That we want to make sure that that end goes on to the nose cone first. And it leaves our little cross points, which we're going to drill later to attach the rest of the payload bay together. So the little X's or crosses need to be closer to this end than up here. They're right here. There's three of them. Okay, so we're going to take that off. I see my black line. I have my nose cone there. I almost forgot to do because I didn't see it laying over there is a piece of coarse sandpaper and what we're going to do is um, we're going to rough up the shoulder part which is the narrow part of this nose cone and we're going to rough it up very, very well. So this might take a couple of minutes. So it's really important that you understand how you're going to do things. And um, luckily I saw the piece of sandpaper laying over there and it made me remember to do it. So what we're trying to do is give grooves to the super glue to um, soak in, not soak into, to grab into. Almost done. And I think I was saying that we were going to put six drops. Well, we're going to put a lot more than that. So hardly anything will soak into plastic, and so we're doing more of a mechanical kind of bond.
So once we get done sanding this, um, we're going to go ahead and take the super glue. We're going to take the cap off. And then we're going to go ahead and put super glue all over the plastic. Quite a bit of it. We're not going to put any in the cardboard tube and then we're going to take them and we're going to spin them together that the glue from the plastic is going to get up on the cardboard. We're going to hold them together for a minute and then we're going to set them aside, tip down to dry. And I'm going to set it so that the nose cone or the tip is pointing straight down. I put the cap back on the the super glue and we're going to go on to the set next part is out of the box of parts there's a small fuzzy looking motor tube it's the, one of the smallest diameter tubes or it is the smallest diameter tube in the box we're going to get bag number two and we're going to empty this out on the table We're going to be using these bags later to glue on. Okay? So in this bag, we have three rings with a big hole in the middle. As it turns out, this tube will fit through those holes. We have an another one that's fairly thick. It's thicker than the other plywood in here, and it's got a small hole in it. And we'll be gluing these parts up here in a second. And then we have another one that's kind of funny looking. It was kind of complicated how to describe how to build this aspect, but I went ahead and, and put it together for you. And what this is, it's the lid of a baffle. And what the, our baffle is going to do for us is that when I was talking, when I was talking in the first video, how when the motor gets done burning on this particular G80, there's a seven second delay. After seven seconds, out of the top of this motor is going to be a big black powder, very hot gas cloud that comes out inside your rocket. Well, if I don't protect the parachute and other things from that, those hot gases, they're going to burn and get holes in them. So what we're doing is we're going to build a baffle that sits in front of this and it has a steel wool mesh, steel wool, stainless steel mesh in it that is going to absorb the heat out of that hot gas so that it doesn't burn the parachute. And what this also does is that in the rocket we have our recovery cord or our shock cord. It gives us an anchor point. This yellow cord here is called Kevlar cord and it's rated at 3,000 pounds breaking strength so it's very strong. Um, it's fire resistant so we're, we're using it in a proper application. The problem is it's very expensive. And so I, I was talking to you about how I'm up against a weight requirement of the 3.3 pounds. And so I had to use a little bit thinner plywood in this d design. And so what I did to strengthen it is I put a piece of this fiberglass material, material called G10 and it strengthens where it needs to be. And this this is just a loop with a knot tied in it and so when we pull on that loop with our recovery harness that it's distributing the impact or the load to more than just a small area of this. So that's the top of it. So inside the box we're going to get the, the shorter of the two couplers and what a coupler is is that it allows me to slide the coupler inside the body tube. Okay, and so when we get this baffle all made up, that we're actually going to put it right about here in the rocket and stuff. So we have to make it up outside the rocket first, and then we'll go ahead and um, put it together. So for right now, we're going to put these away, and we're going to do those in a little bit, and we're going to take the three centering rings and they're called centering rings because this is the motor tube 
It happens to be 29 millimeters rocket motors for the hobby or designated in millimeters and stuff as far as diameter.